So basically all it is, is an array modifier. So add a modifier array, and we can increase the array here. We can change the offset of the array. So I'll move it out a little bit. So basically you want to make sure that these aren't set too far apart or too far away using your offset here. Now how I got it to, to spin around was I used a curve modifier. So if I hit 5 to go on the top view and I tap Shift A, and under curve I just add a Bezier curve there. I'll go ahead and tap Z to go into wireframe. Hit Tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to grab one end, uh, one vertex point here at the end of this curve. Hit G to grab it, move it along here. And I'm just going to hit R to rotate that. On the original cube, I'll hit Z to go back into solid view, is under modifier, add a curve, and we want to use the curve we just made, so let's hit Z to go back into wireframe and select that curve, and it's just this Bezier curve here. We could double click here and give it a better name like our DOM curve or whatever. And then select back on the little dominoes we made and under the curve modifier we want to choose our DOM curve. Click on our curve, hit G to grab and then we can just bring it up here and then I'm going to go ahead and hit G to grab and just kind of move it up to where it's kind of piercing them. So now if we then hit tab to go into edit mode of our curve and then I select one of the endpoints, I hit G to grab it you'll see it's now bending the dominoes all around everywhere. So I'll hit Control Z because I don't really want it to bend that way. Hit 5 to go into top view. And what I can do is tap A to select all the points of my curve and then tap W to subdivide it. Now I've got this point in the middle which I can now move and you see that the dominoes uh, follow respectively. And I can add as many of these kind of points as I need and hit R to rotate them to do whatever I want. So I'll hit tab to go back into object mode, select my dominoes, and then under array I can increase this count to as many as I possibly want. So basically I want to grab this endpoint of this curve here, grab it, and I can then select this point and this point and tap W to subdivide it. Now back in object mode, if I grab my dominoes set, I can pull it and it will follow along the line of my curve. So then I can click back on my curve, hit tab to go into edit mode, and then hit G to grab these, rotate these however I want, grab that maybe, rotate it up here. And so basically now I have this curved set of dominoes and we could of course create any kind of shapes or letters or any crazy thing we wanted to in this way. So the final step here would be to go back into object mode apply this array modifier and then apply the curve modifier and then we can actually select the curve and delete it and so then we need to hit T to bring up our tools and make sure the plane is not selected and hit add active so now what we need to do is separate this because this has become just one big object and we need it to be individual objects so all we do is hit tab to go into edit mode and we want to go to mesh vertices separate by loose parts and this has now separated all of these little dominoes into individual dominoes so the final thing we need to do before we deselect off of it is go to options well we need to hit tab to make sure we're back in object mode and then go to tools under edit select set origin origin to center of mass and now every single one of these little dominoes now has their origin in the correct points. Okay, so now for the big moment, if we maybe grab this first domino here and maybe we hit R to rotate a little bit to give it a little head start, and we want to click on this plane here, our ground, and under physics tab make sure add passive is turned on. Now if we click play, We see our dominoes going. Now this is why you want to do tests because I probably had these set a little too far apart. And also you see that the animation only goes on till about 250 frames. 
So what we need to do there to actually see it all play out is we need to first switch this to something bigger, probably like a thousand frames or something. And then we need to go over to our scene tab here and under rigid body cache make sure the length of this is the same as the length we want our animation. So we would set that to a thousand. And then we could hit play and we'll see them going there. Now you'll see some of these dominoes are wobbling and that's not really good. That, that could be treacherous if we had a very complex system set up here. So one cool thing I found out we can do about that so that nothing accidentally falls before it's time is we can hit pause and go back to the end. If we come here to the physics tab of these objects and we click on enable deactivation and start deactivated then everything that we have checkmarked as start deactivated means that it won't be moving or doing anything at all until something else acts upon it. So actually what we would want to do, because we can't hit A, select all these, and then just do it for all, which would be great if I could, but I can't. So a quick fix to that would be to select everything, shift select our plane to make sure it's deselected there, shift also select one of these dominoes, doesn't matter which one, tap J, and this will join all of these together. And then we can click Enable Deactivation, Start Deactivated. And then we can go hit Tab to go back into Edit Mode, Mesh, Vertices, Separate by Loose Parts. And then we can hit Tab to go back into Object Mode, hit T to bring up our tools. Under Tools here, under Set Origin, Set Origin to Center of Mass, and we're good to go. And now when we hit Play, these dominoes should begin deactivated. And in fact, they are. And this one is too. And the starter one, I wouldn't want to have it started deactivated because it's got to start the whole show here. And so, kind of slow. So we, we probably could have decrease the offset space in our array, but you know, you figure those stuff out as you test and you uh, set up your rig and everything.